us in, Jane.
may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us.
be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, your blessed Son be now from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Give us this bread always, that he may live in us and we in him. And that strength our us is you. We may live as not our in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Our first reading is 1 Kings chapter 19. Elijah went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord, take, my, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, get up and eat. He looked and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him and said, get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank, and then he went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the Mount of God. Here ends the first reading. The second reading is from Ephesians chapter four. So then putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly in their own hands so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of our, your mouths, but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, which which you were marked with seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander together with all malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has given you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Here ends the second lesson. The Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Thank you. 
Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May we see it. And in that tells me I'm going to be seated too. So everybody on the island are safe. I'm not coming out to know about that. Elijah. Elijah, Elijah. Have you ever read the story of Elijah? How he went head to head with a hard-hearted woman named Jezebel. Jezebel was a foreigner. She was not of the tribes of Israel or Judah. King Ahab, who was the worst of all of Israel's kings, married this foreign woman. And then, because of his sweet faith, he allowed her to bring her foreign gods into Israel. And things began to unravel rapidly. I had an Old Testament professor, and uh, there are no real young ears here, so I'm okay. But he never could say the name Jezebel without adding that itch, okay? You can put the letter in front if you want. He could never say that name. Jezebel is the arch enemy of the Old Testament. She was queen over Israel during the reign of Ahab. And she was something. She brought all her foreign gods into Israel. And as she did that, she got rid of all the priests of Yahweh. She killed most of them. Most of them were slaughtered. And only Elijah was left. And Elijah fled. He ran as fast as his foot thoughts were taken. He got out of there. And then he ended up in the wilderness. And he was severely depressed. And he fell asleep. He said, God, take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors. Get rid of me. I can do nothing. And he fell asleep. And then an angel of the Lord appeared to him and woke him up. He said, Elijah, get up, eat, drink. And Elijah looked, and there on a rock was a loaf of bread baking in the sun and a jug of water. And he ate and he drank and he went back to sleep. And the angel came a second time. And Elijah, get out, eat and drink. Otherwise, it's going to be too hard for you. So Elijah woke again and ate and drank. And thus begins the story of bread in the life of God's people. Bread, the nourishment of life. The staff of life, as many know it. Jesus talks about being the bread of life. The very foundation of life. How many of you have ever eaten a fresh, hot, out of the oven loaf of bread? <laughs> yeah, there's not much better. Than <clears throat> you get that out there, and maybe it's got a little crust, and you break it open, and there's that all that soft inside, and you get a little butter, and you smack it on there. And you take a bite. Oh. I remember a time when uh, Dennis, Dennis Kaiken and Kenny Hahn and I were pretending to play golf. Uh, we only pretended, we never, we never really played. But we played golf, and then Dennis wanted to show us a brand new store in town, the Wegmans on Tillman Street in Allentown. So we went there, and they had their brick oven then. And they were making fresh bread. And we got a loaf, round loaf of bread that came right out of the oven. And we took that up to the balcony. We cracked it open. We had a jigger of butter. And we just sat there and ate that whole loaf. <laughs> so good. That whole loaf of warm, warm bread. Oh, was that good. 
Bread is the nourishment. You know, I know when you're watching calories, oh, we can't eat bread, you know, but uh, come on, people. A little, little, little slice of bread every now and then, that's good stuff. Jesus compares himself to be the bread of life. Elijah found the bread, and it gave him nourishment to continue for 40 days and 40 nights to Mount Horeb, where he found and worshipped God and found the strength to confront Jezebel and eventually to defeat her. But that bread, that nourishing bread, you're going to hear a lot about that in the Sundays to come because this year's lectionary is all, at this time of year, is all about bread. And you, as a pastor, you begin to wonder, how many times can I talk about bread? <laughs> how many times can I mention bread and get away with it? Well, I'm going to find out because in two weeks I'll be back here and talking about bread again. <laughs> but in the meantime, bread was the sustainer of life in the ancient Middle East. If you could make a loaf of bread, you had food, and that food was good, and it nourished you, and it nourished your body, and it got you moving. And that is what our relationship to God in Christ is to be. That our relationship to, to God in Christ is to be our bread of life. But so many times, the world as it is puts Christ on a side shelf. We make time for worship well, once a week, maybe. Some Sundays, you know, you get up and you think, oh, man, I think I could sleep in this morning. I really had a rough weekend. I had a long day yesterday. I was tempted to sleep in this morning. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't get away with that. But don't we feel that way? And when it comes to life in general, out in the, our day-to-day -day lives, how many times do we include Christ in our decision-making, in our practices, in everything that we do? How many times is Christ the center for what our decision-making is? I received the afterthought. We have to take care of business, we've got to take care of family, we've got to take care of this, we've got to take care of that, you know, uh, got to pay our taxes, got to do this, got to do that, got to keep going. And we work and work and work and work and work and get nowhere. Nowhere. Nothing in this world will endure forever. Everything will change. I have a very personal attachment to where I grew up. I grew up in a wonderful area, a very small town, lots of woods for us to explore as kids, a stream that we could swim in and fish in, and in the winter when it froze, we could skate on it. We were great. And I have an idyllic memory of that in my mind. But yet I know if I go back there, it's not going to be the same. It's going to have changed in some ways drastically than what I remember. It's not permanent. It was a good, it's a good memory, but it's not permanent. Nothing in all of creation is permanent except a relationship with God in Jesus Christ. So why is it we put that on the back burner so often? And we, when we have time, we'll go to church. When we have time, we'll get involved in the work of the church, reaching out to people in the name of Christ. When we have time, we're going to do this. When we have time. Are you the author of time. 
when we have time. And the answer is simple. We don't have time other than the time God gives us. And what do we do with that time? Do we honor God? Or do we take care of our own personal business? Getting this, getting that, doing this, doing that, taking care of this, and then there's time. We might say a prayer. We might bow our heads before we eat a meal. Oh, but don't do that in a restaurant. People will think you're weird, right? Yeah, yeah don't, don't do that. We play with time as though it's something we can control, and it's not. Elijah knew that his time was minimal, and he was ready to end it. But God said, no, I want you to go on, and I want you to face this woman, this Jezebel, this non-believer. And I want you to testify to her. And if her heart changes, praise God. If it doesn't, she will face the consequences. But you do not get out of doing what I've asked you to do simply because you're tired. Simply because you have too much else to do. God called all of us in the waters of our baptism to live a life of faith. And it's never too late to start doing that. Never too late to say, today, I'm going to make a step to honor God in Christ. And I'm going to love my neighbor as myself. I'm not going to allow the angry words and the false accusations of this world get between me and a relationship with my fellow human beings. We are in the midst of a political season, and words are flying around on all sides, and everybody is accusing this and accusing that and this and that and the other and that, 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 that. Who is loving God in Jesus Christ? Is it you? Are you? Are you? Or me? Do we honor Christ with our words, our actions, and our deeds. Or do we put him on a shelf for a better time, the right time, when we have time, as though we are somehow in control of time? I'm getting old. You know, my fall back in March reminded me just how old I'm getting. I walked out of a picnic yesterday afternoon, late yesterday afternoon, and I had a problem. The driveway sloped down. Do you know how hard it is to walk down a sloped driveway when your back isn't hurting and your feet don't walk the way you want to? I had to wait for my stepdaughter to come grab my arm and said, come on, Patty, I'll take you down this path. Oh, Rocky, I'll take you down the walk where Jill's pulling up the car. Getting <sighs> old. Beginning to feel it. But it's never too old. It's never too late. To give Christ the glory. And to share that with others. So that the love of God in Jesus Christ can come into the world through us and shine a light into the darkness, whatever that darkness is for you or for me. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord.
He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let's take some time to read one another.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this congregation and for all who are gathered. We be present among anyone who cannot be with us today. Be with all who are hurting, grieving, or ill. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember the saints who have gone before us in faith. Trusting in the promise of the resurrection, we find hope in your communion of saints of all times and all places. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up these prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them into your holy keeping. Amen. Let us pray in the way of our, our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you with great and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.